What's up, guys? I'm Salty Mike, and this is your Star Citizen Week in Review for December 27th, 2021. The Star Citizen content drought is about to begin. We have CIG going on vacation, which means no video updates, no roadmap updates, no game updates. So if we have any major issues, we're going to have to deal with them for a little while. But Jump Town 2 is at least holding me over for now. And I don't know how it's possible, but CIG managed to reach an entirely new level of insanity with one of their ship sales. All that and more on today's Week in Review. And as always, if this is your first Week in Review, this is where I take all of the official Star Citizen news, put it into one video, and throw my opinions in there as well. I do also live stream at twitch.tv slash salty mic every day but Monday starting at 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time. So if you want to stop by and say hello, feel free to do so. Uh, if you haven't yet, make sure you guys check out the Reaction Channel or Salty Mike 2 where we're kind of throwing up reactions to other videos in the Star Citizen space and other ones that I do find interesting as well. Might do some Let's Plays and things like that on that channel. And lastly... Jake Acapella, the community manager who does the roadmap updates for us, as well as other things, is doing a charity live stream for, I think, the whole next week. And it starts today at 10.30 a.m. Central Time. And he's going to be playing Kingdom Hearts for Extra Life for Kids for the Austin Children's Hospital. So link for his stream will be in the description down below if you guys want to support a worthy cause and someone who really does great things for, for us, the community. So make sure you guys go ahead and check that out. Now, let's jump right into the video. We have patch notes updates and 3.16, we had two patches, one on the PTU, 3.16i, where they changed the underground facilities security guards um, to, I assume, lessen the penalties when you accidentally kill one of them on the uh, starting missions. And then they also raised the price of the A2 bombs because they know the thing is a little too good for Jump Town 2, I would imagine. But I still don't think this is enough. Trip Rodriguez, another uh, Twitch streamer in my chat during Answer the Call, suggested a minimum altitude for bomb drops. I think that's a really good solution. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below on that. So that last patch culminated into what is now known as 316 Live. And we got some interesting videos that came out with the release of that patch. So as you can see, they made a video that is showing features that didn't make it into the patch. And part of me would get mad about that. But then the other part of me knows that something clearly went wrong with 316 if these were in the video and that they absolutely made the right decision to not give us whatever was going wrong with that initial 316 patch. With that, we have a 3.16 known issues page. So if you're going to play this game, and I've noticed a lot of people coming to my Twitch chat and other uh, Twitch streamers chats asking about the game, referral codes, is this game good, all those things. This is the current, this is currently the most important thing you should be reading, in my opinion. It's all the known issues, kind of how to work around some of them, and also lets, this, lets us know the status of some of those and uh, possible fixes in the near future. They also had a post for prepared for Jump Town, which is the big dynamic event that came with 316. Uh, this is a like it's it's a legit page that is instead of giving tips, is just hundreds of dollars worth of spaceships for sale, which most of them are not even viable for the event. But hey, you know, CIG doesn't do anything without selling everything, so very typical there. Then we had the Jump Town schedule post, which um, Let's start out with something. I have no idea what happened to this. Yeah, 100%. So, Jump Town V2, an another one of the specific design objectives was to use it as the first test case for these systemic triggers to sure. where we can actually have quantum inject this information dynamically. Yes. And so like right now we're running nine tails and one of the complaints that I've seen is, you know, hey, it doesn't fire you know, often enough. It's like I missed it and then it's gone. And so one of the you know, one of the directions in which we want to go is having some of these events like Jump Town, which can be triggered by player by, actions, by player actions the, or quanta or player yeah. and quanta basically doing whatever we determine. But I assume this is the usual CIG thing where they talk about what they could do without ever actually doing it. So that kind of happened here. And this is definitely something that is manually started and not automatically done by us or in on any sort of timer or anything like that. So, this this is the thing that upset me the most. Um, there's also a, you know, with the schedule, 
everything is on a schedule where I would have to stay up late or it's not when I'm playing video games, which is early in the morning, but it also does seem to be at prime times for most of the active player base. This wasn't how it was in the beginning. The original schedule was very different where one of the jump town times was on my streaming and my uh, just general playing video game schedule. Then they switched it last minute after I'd already gone to bed and set an alarm along with a number of other creators we were all going to get together and do a big jump town event and they changed it without really giving a lot of notice and i thought that was really kind of messed up but in general most of the times now make sense for prime times for most of the active player base so whatever it's all fine the schedule's there if you guys want to participate in jump town that is the schedule for it there's also the nine tails lockdown coming up starting in a couple days i believe then moving on to other updates, we have no video updates, we have no roadmaps, we have no monthly reports, no letter from the chairman, but we did have two ship sales for 316, sort of. The first one is the Drake Cutlass Steel, and this is the most out of touch sale I've ever seen in my entire life. The videos are usually an exaggeration, um, nothing new there, but the guns on this ship, completely useless. The ship itself, not useless, but it, it its current characteristics in the current iteration of the cutlass does not fit at all with any sort of combat roles really and then you get the price of this thing it falls in line with other drop ships sure but this ship doesn't fall in line with any of the other drop ships on really any level they made 380,000 on the first day that the ship came out so they probably sold just over a thousand of these which i think you can call a massive fail so i i hope they learn their lesson on this one a little bit and um, if you're going to sell something, like understand what you're selling and understand how it fits in Star Citizen. Uh, but they're also selling more paints with these and they look really cool. I really like them, but yeah, it's still the same shit paint system. So it's kind of like I throw my hands up in them. It's at the same time, it's like kind of a bummer. Then we had the day 12 bike, uh, the last day of the Luminalia sale they showed an image of this ground vehicle and it's a tease of another hover bike sale and people lost their shit when they thought CIG gave them a bike for free and it was actually a screenshot of the bike. <laughs> Classic Star Citizen. Um, people, they like thinking people want screenshots when they actually want things to do, guys. Like, come on. Uh, then we had a Galactopedia update. Uh, there was a feature article on a space catfish, basically, and the rest of the articles were the usual things about locations. But the Daymar Rally was in there as well, so if you guys want to read that, it's pretty cool. Sneak peek, uh, looks like Claymores, but I'm more interested in the boxes behind them because lock boxes are on the roadmap and they kind of look like what those might be. And the last thing is uh, Jump Point is available. It's the main feature articles on the Odyssey and... Uh, the last there was like another thing about the gray cat roc so i'm going to check out that article personally but i think most of you know that the odyssey is not my favorite ship so yeah these are how the updates are going to be for the next couple weeks so i want to say thank you so much guys for watching um i think yeah this should be the last week in review until next year so thank you again for giving me the best year i've ever had in my entire life uh and it's all due to you guys and yeah, I just can't thank you enough. So make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe for more weeks in review and leave a comment down below. Uh, the last video, that's the highest viewed week in review ever. The amount of positivity in the comments, it was mind blowing. Thank you. Thank you so much for those. Um, most of the time I'm looking through the comments and looking at the negative ones and sifting through the very few positive things and man it was overwhelmingly positive and you guys are awesome so it's nice to see that you guys are out there and uh i hear you so thank you so much and uh i can't wait to do more in the new year see you next time guys thanks for watching